What a way to return to Old Trafford. The stadium looked brilliant, even without the fans. Uh, we've definitely done the best job of any Premier League side, in my opinion, and quite a lot of people's opinion on Twitter, even non-United fans, and Gary Neville, and a few others. But yeah, what they've done with the stadium looks brilliant, uh, particularly for lockdown, obviously, you know, with all the fans, pictures of fans, and just the general decor was brilliant. But anyhow, it's not about that. It's about that man over there. Scoff I've got over there, Anthony Martial, absolutely phenomenal performance. The first Premier League hat-trick for us since 2013 when RVP scored against Aston Villa. Uh, hat-trick, so seven years. Don't really want to go that period again without scoring a hat-trick, but yeah, phenomenal performance from him and also the first player since Bruno uh, Fernandes' arrival to not, sorry, to get man of the match that wasn't Bruno Fernandes, if that makes any sense. He's got man of the match every single Premier League game since he's arrived. And if it wasn't for Martial's hat-trick, he would have got it again today, to be honest, because he was phenomenal. I love the way we set up. That was a brilliant, uh, you know, uh, formation. No, brilliant lineup. Oh, you know what I meant. Anyway, the 11 that started was perfect, to be honest. Uh, you know, Greenwood, Pogba coming in for James and for Fred. Um... And Matic coming in for McTominay, there you go. I was I was trying to think because I was thinking of the forward five, but Matic sat deeper, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it was phenomenal. It worked really, really well. And we could have been 4-0 up in the first half, to be honest. Uh, it, Rashford played all right, other than in front of goal, of course. Uh, you know, he, he was lackluster. He missed a couple of sitters, an open net, and a, a brilliantly weighted pass from Pogba. Like a, a lovely little chip pass that Rashford miss hit. But despite that, he still got two assists. So, you know... He's still playing well as a left winger. He just needed to improve his shooting, to be honest. Uh, but thankfully, Martial had all the shooting today. And it's the first time I can truthfully say Martial looked like a striker. He looked like a number nine. He didn't look like a winger forced to play striker. He was instinctive. And this is the kind of thing that Agala was brought for. He's the only one with this skill set in the squad. But Martial demonstrated this today. Uh, fantastic first time finishes for his first two goals. Uh, brilliant uh, work from Rashford, lifting it over a couple of Sheffield United defenders and then slamming it in and praying that Martial would get on the end of it, which he did. And then uh, shortly after, I think 20 minutes later, wan runs down the line, cuts it in with a brilliant driven uh, cross and Martial taps it in again and there you go, 2-0. Brilliant. Uh, Rashford, again, could have scored just before this. Uh, Martial, brilliant work. I've used brilliant about 800 times. But anyway, great work. Um, I feel like, like when I saw it, I think it was him trying to say, here you go, like here's the thanks for giving me the assist with the last goal. Because he could have finessed that in. Um, but I think he took a touch too many, passed it off to Rashford, who was kind of expecting it a little bit earlier. And it's not an excuse. He should have scored, of course. But... Yeah, I'm just trying to give it reasoning because it did look a little a little weird. But anyhow, we missed that. Um, Maguire had a goal disallowed, which back in the early noughties, uh, that sounds weird. But yeah, early noughties and late 90s, that wouldn't have been disallowed, of course. But nowadays, with the rule book, two hands on the defender, of course, fair enough. It's been disallowed, but Ferdinand, Terry, Adams... Wouldn't have been disallowed in their era. But anyhow, uh, yeah, that, that would have been another goal. We, we could have been 4-0 up, as I say, with the chances we had. Maybe even 5 in the first half. Sheffield United didn't really create a lot. And it seems as though their season might start to trickle out a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's the lockdown. I, I know, obviously, their best defender was already injured. And then Egan got, uh, got a ban against Newcastle. So... Yeah, they were without their two best centre-backs this season and it kind of showed, but the rest of their squad did look shattered by the 60th minute, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's a little bit run down. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Crystal Palace finish higher than Sheffield United, but still, they've been terrific this season. A lot of people had them down for relegation. That's obviously not going to happen and they're going to finish comfortably mid-table. Probably not going to get the Europa League spot that they potentially could have. Uh, prior to lockdown but you never know there's still eight games left is it now or is it seven regardless doesn't matter second half started um and yeah fernandez was pivotal in just so many little creating well they don't go down as chances created because a chance didn't actually happen from them but just creating in the in the midfield just giving the ball off 
and then making things happen really he was fantastic all game and he could have had a couple of assists but he didn't ultimately that sentence got away from me anyhow Rashford uh, fantastic work to get uh, around the, the couple of defenders play it in and as soon as that ball was played to Martial you knew he was going to score a little dink there's the hat trick that he was beaming the entire time he was subbed off on the uh, on the stands the sky cameras were picking him up and it's really really nice to see him smiling and beaming and just proud of his performance and i remember seeing on stream after the spurs game that you know there was a few people growing a little bit annoyed with him i suppose uh, against spurs and saying we need a new striker next season but i stuck by him and i said next season is like where basically give him another season I was saying uh, because Fernandez came in January we've had a lot of injuries to, to Pogba to Rashford there's players around him now we're likely to get Sancho in summer so you know give him a season where he can actually flourish as the striker because he's already got 18 or 19 goals this season he's drawn level with Rashford in the Premier League 14 goals apiece uh, so you know that's almost 30 Premier League goals between them and it means that selling Lukaku and loaning Sanchez was completely justified by Oli because, yeah, the, the two counterparts in all competitions nearly have 40 goals now. And, yeah, that's with all these injuries and with sub some par, some subpar performances from Martial. So I think give him another year, certainly, because, you know, he'd be heading towards his prime. He's only 24 still. Um, so, yeah, give, give, him a, give him a season to really show what he can be about because if he performs like this in the system that we've got at the minute with the players around him and then add to that potentially with Sancho it could be devastating it really could and again even though Rashford's finishing was pretty poor today he still played well in the left wing role he created chances uh, I think he created three only Paul Pogba uh, created more and I would say with Pogba it's the happiest I've been with his performance since he scored two against Man City to win us the game 3-2 he was phenomenal it, it, you know it was a proper centre midfielder's mature, dominant performance. He sat back uh, to allow Fernandez some space, but there's always that option to have both of them pushed up a little bit further, a bit like De Bruyne and David Silva do for City, or Bernardo Silva, or you know one of their forward players. But anyhow, uh, yeah, there, there's always the option to do that. But I like that he played a little bit deeper, and he still created four chances. That says a lot about his performance. And it, it was just dominant. It really was. And Matic really helped in that CDM role, allowing the two players to go forward in the midfield. And then we've also got Fred, who's been fantastic all season on the bench. And McTominay, who's again been fantastic this season. So we've got depth in or around midfield, which is really, really nice. It's one of our strongest areas, which we haven't been able to say since the mid noughties Again, sounds dumb, but that's what they're called, the noughties The mid noughties Um when you know we it was the last kind of uh, of you know the class of 92 like the later years that's the last time we had a dominant midfield really uh, so it's nice to see and yeah another thing any of those forward five Greenwood who I haven't mentioned but he didn't do anything wrong he created a couple of things uh, had a couple of half shots but was lethal on the counter-attack in starting some of our attacks but yeah Greenwood Martial Rashford Bruno and Pogba any of them can score and it's been ages since we've had that like usually it's one or two possibly three players where you're like yeah they could get a goal but all five of these any of them can score and that's brilliant and we need to keep them fit for the rest of this season and I genuinely think we'll finish third you can mark this video you can mark what I'm saying I genuinely do think we'll finish third Chelsea have a tough run of games I think they still play City who they've got next they play Leicester, Spurs and Liverpool, if I'm not mistaken. So that's really, really tough end of season. We're only two points behind them. Of course, they have a game in hand, but that is against City. So, you know, maybe they'll get a draw. They could win, of course. Anyone can beat anyone. But you would expect them to get a draw or a loss in that game. So that would put us two or three points behind them. Leicester were six points behind, but we play them on the final day and they've only got one win in seven I think so they're starting to derail their season a little bit so yeah I, I really do think we'll finish third and then who knows next season but you know it's going to be great the season will end and then we'll still have the Europa League to look forward to 6-0 in the first half I think we're pretty much certain to get into the quarterfinals but yeah it would be nice if we've already got Champions League qualifications secured regardless of what City's outcome is 
with their FFP case. Uh, so yeah, finish third or fourth, but I genuinely think we'll finish third. And yeah, we got Norwich in the FA Cup, so hopefully we can win that in, on Saturday, progress to the semi-final, just have a nice end to the season. It would be phenomenal and yeah, I, I'm just happy. I'm really, really happy that we've got such a good squad at the minute. Like, you know, Egalo could have had a fourth right at the end. Uh, Shaw, Sean Wambasaka I haven't really mentioned, but they had brilliant performances playing in the fullback role, getting forward uh, and defending really, really well. And as I say, Shaw could have had a uh, had an assist in the, the last couple of minutes when Egalo didn't, well, he, he kind of screwed up his chance. But yeah, he came on off the bench for a historic five substitutes uh, all at once. So yeah, that was something about this game, I suppose, to go on the history books. But yeah, I'm just happy. And yeah, we'll use a rotated squad against Norwich and... I'll be happy with whatever the lineup is, really, because we, we've got quality players now, and we just need to add a couple of little things here and there, particularly Sancho, uh, maybe, you know, a midfielder, backup left back, maybe. That's for another video. But anyhow, yeah, phenomenal performance. 3-0, get in.